Hello, I'm Emma from Mmm English. Today, I want to introduce my friend Mark. He is a relationship expert, dating coach, life coach, and、um, we've been hanging out a little bit lately because、um, Mark has a YouTube channel as well, where he you help primarily. Women in relationships and in difficult sort of periods of their life to improve relationships with the people around them. Right? Tell us a bit about what you do. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm a life, dating, and relationship coach from here in Australia. I met Em at a Sydney event and just <laughs> loveliest, lovely woman. And my channel is about empowering women through growth, self-esteem, and authenticity. And basically,、mm, what by that, what does that mean? Authenticity. What does that mean? Yeah. So it just means about being real, being yourself. So、yeah. this is talking about the adjective authentic as well. So authenticity、yep. is related to to the adjective authentic, which just means real. So talking about relationships and、um, particularly between women. And their partners, making them real and meaningful and honest, right? Yes, exactly. Honest, open, vulnerable, and connecting. Oh my gosh, so many good words there. We're gonna pop some of the definitions of those in the description box below this video. But today, since you're a dating expert, a relationship expert. I wanted to talk to you about some of the phrasal verbs and the idioms that we use in English to talk about love and relationships. So I want to be able to show my audience, you know, some really common language and expressions that they can use to talk about love. Sounds fantastic.、Mm-hmm. I love it. So the first thing that I thought that I'd introduce is three phrasal verbs that are really common. Okay, so that would be hang out. Catch up and hook up. So all of these、um, phrasal verbs can be used to talk about relationships in some way. I want you to tell me what's the difference between them. When would we use them? Yeah. So hang out, catch up, and hook up. They can mean quite different things. Hang out is a casual request to see you. So it's a very basic request. I say, Emma, I want to hang out with you. That literally just means I'd like to see Emma and spend some time with you. Spend some time with you. So、her. that could be that could be a romantic relationship, or it could be just with friends, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you have to know the context. Like if a man that you meet, say on Tinder, on a dating app, says hang out. It could. It's likely to be more a relationship context. Uh huh. Whereas me and Emma are friends. We're hanging out now. We're hanging out now. Yeah. So hang out can be either. It basically means spend some time together. Let's see each other. Okay. So what about catch up? Catch up is generally saved for people you already know. So if I don't see Emma for a month, instead of saying let's hang out, I'd probably say let's catch up. Uh、mm-hmm. huh. So it's a similar term, and it's usually used with someone that you already knew previously. The majority of the time that someone says "let's catch up," they're saying, "I want to reconnect with you after a period of time." Right. And again, it could be friends, or it could be a relationship. But friends can also catch up, right? I can catch up with friends for coffee、exactly. any time I like. Exactly, and because you already know your friends, you generally say catch up、yeah. more than hang out. Well, the other thing is, if you haven't seen someone for a while, then catch up is a really common phrasal verb as well that that、yeah. you'd use to say, ah,、oh, do you know we haven't seen each other for ages? We should catch up. So, what about hook up? So, hook ups used in a romantic context. You wouldn't hook up with your friend. You wouldn't hook up with your friend <laughs> unless you wanted to get romantic with your friend, <laughs> which might get awkward. Which might get slightly <laughs> awkward. So hook up is often it can refer to any number of romantic encounters. It could be I hooked up with him at a bar,、mm-hmm. which usually means I kissed him. At yeah, a bar. usually it means kissing, right? If your friend says to you, "I hooked up with him," sometimes it can be just kissing. Sometimes it can be more than that. And also, hook up. It doesn't refer to 
a relationship that is ongoing. It's no, like a one-off, isn't it? That's an important point. Yeah, mm. it's a casual. So a hookup is a casual term. Nothing is serious, at least not yet in the person's mind describing it. Mm -hmm. If I say I hooked up with someone, it was a casual one-time yeah. encounter. It's not to say I might not see them again. In my mind right now, it's casual. Mm -hmm. That's quite interesting because a lot of my audience, you know, the concept of like a casual hookup doesn't exist for them in their yeah, cultures, you know, it's not exactly. it's not part of what they do. Yep. Um, so if that's the case for you, then hookup is probably not really language that is really relevant. Uh, it's only, you know, quick, informal, yeah. non-serious relationships. Yeah, right? exactly. Nail it. So one other aspect that I want to talk to you about is the way that we use the verb fall in expressions about love. Because we say fall in love and we say fall for someone. What does that sort of mean? Why are we using that expression? It's really about, you were saying before, before we chatted, it's literally about falling is where the phrase originally came from and it's about losing control of mm. your feelings mm -hmm. and losing control of things. So if I say I fall for you, mm. it means without my control, without wanting to, I'm just falling. Yeah. So when you say fall for someone, it's generally a bit more casual than falling in love. Yes. Yeah. When you fall for someone, that could be after a few dates. Mm -hmm. I'm really falling for her. I've been on four dates with her. I'm really falling yeah. for her. And often used with starting, starting to fall. Or, yeah. yeah. So it's often right at that initial period in a relationship. I'm right. starting to get a lot of feelings. Yeah. I'm falling for her. Yeah. She's amazing. It's a good thing to be falling for someone or to be falling in love. It's a really, really positive way of talking about a relationship. Yeah, exactly. And the next falling in love comes along a bit later when things are more serious and you've really got to know the person. You've formed those deep bonds. Mm. So I'm falling in love with him or even I've fallen Yes. In love with him. Right. So we're changing I, tense I, I there. I fell. I actually said that wrong. I fell in love with him. I fell in love with him in the past. Yeah, but no, I have fallen in love. I, I, it, that, yeah. that tense, the perfect tense, is the correct one to use then because it's an action that started in the past and is still relevant in the present. If you said, I fell in love with that person, by using the past tense, it's sort of suggesting that maybe it's an action that's finished in the past. Yeah. So if you're still in love with that person, then using the perfect tense is fallen. right. You're I right. have fallen. Yeah. yeah. I fell in love yeah. kind of means I'm not in love anymore. Yeah. Or I it was something that happened her. in the past. Ages ago. Yeah. 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 Good pick up. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I see why you're good at what you do. Okay. So once you've fallen in love, things have sort of got pretty serious, right? Yes. So around the time when things start getting serious in a relationship, we're talking about engagements and marriages, right? Yeah. Expressions like pop the question. So if you heard someone say, oh, he popped the question, you might be thinking, what question? What's it about? What are they talking about, Mark? So popping the question is just a common colloquial term for getting down on one knee and asking for a hand in marriage. Mm -hmm. So usually it's the man, and you'll often hear at maybe a family event, the people will be talking with each other, and they will say to, often to the woman, when is he going to pop the question? That's it, that's the question. Or, oh my God, he, when did he pop the question? Mm -hmm. Or maybe how did he pop the question? Mm. Or how it's about ask? time he popped the question. Good one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it's all about asking that, basically, that person for marriage, yeah. popping the question. So the question, by the is making it the only important question in the world. The question is about marriage. Will you marry me? Okay. And for, yeah, for some reason, we use the verb pop in that expression to pop the question. Then we say, okay, so he's popped the question. When are you going to tie the knot? So tie the knot literally means get married. You walk down the aisle, as it were, and then you tie the knot and have your wedding. Mm -hmm. Do you know the 
where that expression came from was because it's literally, thing, right? yeah. Oh, I, I thought it was a piece of string that usually before, you know, it was gold and it was silver, the string around the finger symbolized the, the promise. Really? Wait, okay. I this? thought you cross your arms and they do that thing where they put the I think silk. that's an extension of it. It's the right. same kind of idea. So it's about tying some material or some string to connect together. two people together. Mm. That's nice. beautiful. Okay, so tying the knot is lovely, then hopefully there's a, a really happy marriage and relationship forever. But we know that that's sometimes not always the case. Of course. So in relationships, in romantic relationships with people, we often, not we often, but we sometimes, you know, change our ideas or our dreams that we have for our future together. And maybe we want different things. And when that happens, usually we drift apart, okay? We sort of, we're not as close yeah. as we used to be, right? Have you ever had yeah. that happen to you before? Have you drifted apart from someone? Of course, yeah. I've had it with clients and I've had it in my own life too. And there's a couple of ways this can happen. Sometimes it's because the feeling, the falling, isn't so much there anymore. Mm. Or sometimes it's because the way you want to take your life is different to the way the other person wants to take their life. Mm -hmm. And so you literally drift apart because, you know, maybe I want to have travel. kids here in oh, well, yeah. Yeah. I, I want to travel. I want to have kids here in Brisbane. <laughs> and this, my partner wants to travel and doesn't want to have kids. Mm -hmm. And slowly but surely we realize we have different goals and we know that there's a wedge between us mm. or there's a we, we feel separate from each other and we slowly drift apart with our yeah. different goals mm. and yeah. values, different values That's is probably it. what I should call it. Yeah. The other thing that might happen in a relationship is things could get uncomfortable. Maybe people are frustrated in their jobs or they're, and then they start taking it out on each other. And, you know, they're often having arguments or yeah. they're disappointed in each other. Yeah. And so one expression that we say is, is that a couple is on the rocks or their relationship is, is rocky. Yeah. So why, why do we use the word rock? or rocky or on the yeah. rocks to talk about relationships. What's so, your opinion? On the rocks originally comes from the ships. Ah. And when the okay. ships would go towards the rocks and they'd say, bad. she's on the rocks, <laughs> it's, it's not a good thing. When a couple is on the rocks, it means that those challenges, whatever they may be, whether they're not connecting in some way or whether their values are meaning they drift apart, it's meaning that one of them at least is feeling hurt, there's arguments happening, and they're constant. Mm. And this level of arguing means they may soon break up. Mm. And that's basically drift when apart, we say separate. a couple, yeah, drift apart is not as aggressive as on the rocks. Right. Drift apart means they're kind of heading in different directions. Slowly. Yeah, but they still have a, a, a good, not a good relationship. They still respect each other. Mm. They still like each other. They're just drifting apart. They're going in different directions. Mm. Whereas a couple that's on the rocks, when that expression is used, there's usually a lot of resentment and arguing starting. Mm. So it's problems like, up. yeah. yeah. And okay. couples that drift apart will often end up on the rocks. Because uh -huh. they, they, they start fighting they or start arguing fighting about their different values. And okay. the fact that they're drifting apart will obviously make them sensitive mm. because they could be losing this per they drift. They're literally drifting apart and that sensitivity will cause arguments. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, let's think about when a couple or um, two people in a relationship, they separate. And there's always a period where they have to come to terms with or, um, you know, get used to the new situation, right? And often that's not always easy. So we use um, get over and to be over someone in this situation. So, you know, for past boyfriends that I've had, you know, maybe it took a little while for me to get over him. 
get over the relationship, which means yeah. sort of recover from the relationship, right? Exactly, exactly. And I coach a lot of clients through this. And it's basically about putting the resentment or the dislike aside. So moving that, putting that behind you mm. and then opening your heart again, eventually to a new person. Right. So you've got to take that time to get over someone because that means that you can eventually open your heart to someone new. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you don't get over someone, you can jump to the next relationship very quickly and not take the time to process that pain and really let go mm -hmm. of that person so you can be fully open to the new person. Mm -hmm. That pain will still be there in your new relationship. And would you say that to get over someone, usually, um that's talking about the process of becoming okay with that new situation. To be over someone means that you've already gone through that process, right? So exactly. if I said, I'm still trying to get over my ex, um, that's different to saying I am over my ex, which means I've been through the difficult period and I'm ready for a new relationship now, right? Exactly, exactly. You're getting over someone while you're in that period. Mm -hmm. I need to get over this girl. Mm -hmm. I need to put that behind me, get used to the new situation mm -hmm. and put away my disdain for it. Mm. And sometimes this can take a long time. Mm. One of my relationships took me over over six months to get over. Mm. Sometimes it happens quite quickly. Mm. It depends on the relationship. But once I say I'm over her, then it's like, it's done. I'm, it's in the past. I'm ready to move on and I've accepted the situation as it is. Mm. So I think, I mean, that's all been really fascinating hearing about these different expressions and how they're used in, yeah. rela like in relationships. And I think what I would love to recommend for you to do is if you are in a relationship with an, an English speaker, particularly with an Australian, but with any native English speaker, and you're feeling a little unsure or vulnerable about that relationship, then I would really encourage you to check out Mark's channel because he's got a lot of really great content, interesting videos, talking about relationships, talking about how to manage those important relationships in your life. Not to mention, there is a lot of really interesting vocabulary to help you talk about relationships. Relationships are such a huge part of our lives, aren't they? Yeah. Whether they're romantic or not. Of course. But expanding your vocabulary and building on your knowledge of these topics will really, really help you with your conversations in the future. So let us know where we can find you. Thank you. So there'll be a link in the description to my channel. You can also type my name, which we'll put in the description too, or you can search make him yours. All Either right. On. So we should actually just clarify mm. that with Mark's channel, he primarily works with women, right? Yes. Focusing on their relationships with men. You have worked yeah. a little bit with men too, though, haven't I you? I worked with men a lot in the past. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But the channel is mostly focused on women. The channel's now aimed at women. Correct. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So, ladies, I would really encourage you to check out the channel and find out a little bit more about how you can improve the important relationships in your life. Mark, it's been awesome. Yeah, thank you. So if you would like to keep watching and keep practicing with some of my other language lessons, I'm going to put them up on screen right now, right on Mark's face over there. So if you need to follow up with any um, further language, grammar, vocabulary lessons, check these ones out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye for now. Bye.